Good morning, everyone. It's good to see you this morning. Happy Father's Day to each of you fathers. A couple of things before we begin. One is I have been negligent and derelict in my duty. Please forgive me. We hired a new staff person a few days ago, uh, 20 days ago to be exact. His name is CJ. He was on the screen a few weeks ago. He and his wife have been, uh, and his two boys have been worshiping with us for the past few months, and they have joined our staff as the minister of youth and college age folks. And so if you see them around, know that he's part of our family and part of our staff. His name is CJ, his wife, his name is Jennifer, and his two boys, Peace and, oh my gosh, his name is Calvary. And so two wonderful young men, and then two, um, I've known him for a long time. Actually, his history is that he, he was, his cousins were my Young Life kids, and then his, uh, he used to come to our Young Life clubs because that was the only way they could come, to club, and then my son was his ninth grade science teacher, and so we just, some history there, and so we've known him for a while, and he is ready to get to work, so put him to work, okay? The second thing is, and just as equally important, is today is Father's Day. And so happy Father's Day, because the Father's given each of us the responsibility of spiritual leadership in our families. So we're about to see some videos, I want you to enjoy these videos, because we want you to know, dads, that you are loved by your children. But I'm going to ask you to pray for your families for the next 30 days. That you would pray for your family specifically, pray for your children, each specifically by name, and your ability to lead spiritually. Because as you watch these videos, you're going to be blessed. Because I want you to know that the Father enjoys and, is, and has blessed each of you with children. As the, the psalmist says, blessed is the man whose quiver is full of children. So please, enjoy these videos this morning. Father's Day, Dad. Love you. Happy 
Fathers, I hope you were blessed by that because that is the intent. Because it is not the big, huge things we do as dads. It's the small, intimate things that we do with our children, from when they're baby, baby, babies to when they're grown adults. How we love them, how we care for them, that makes us proud of them and them proud of us. And so again, then, happy Father's Day. Don't forget to pray specifically for each of your children and your wives for the next 30 days and how you lead spiritually. Because remember, we want our children to be wise. We want our children to be godly men and women because they take their lead from us as men. Mercy, let's pray together. Father God, we again bless you for this day. Father, it's Father's Day. Yes. And Lord, though you have given us many types of earthly fathers, Lord, we celebrate them. And then too, Father, we turn to you and celebrate you because as Jeff has prayed before, yes. you're the one who keeps wrapping us up in his strong arms and calls us to himself and blesses us, guides us, and gives us security and hope. So, Father, thank you for the strength that you give us, the strength you give fathers to lead us, the strength you give fathers, Lord, to be spiritual guides in their homes and their families. So, Father, guide us now too, Father, as we look together at your word today. So, Father, we bless you and praise you. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. We're coming to the end of our series on the Holy Spirit. And today we're going to Moses, and so it's titled Following God in Moses, chapter 33, verses 12 through 19. Because in this little episode from Moses' life, we get to see again what God is doing and how God relates to us. And so Moses, way back when, starts asking questions that we ask. And so how God answers him is also the way he answers us today. So here's our scripture. Uh, Exodus 33, 12 to 21. Then Moses said to the Lord, See, you say to me, Bring up this people. But you yourself have not let me know who you're going to send with me. Moreover, you said, I have known you by name, and you have also found, I have also found favor in your sight. Now therefore I pray that if I found favor in your sight, let me know your ways, that I may know you, so that I might find favor in your sight. Consider, too, that this nation is your people. And God said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. Then he said to him, 
If your presence does not go with us, then don't lead us from here. For how long can it be known that I and Moses have found favor in your sight, and I and your people? It's not, it is not that you are going with us, so that we and I and your people, we will be distinguished from other people upon the face of the earth. How is that going to happen if you're not with us? Then the Lord said to Moses, I will also do this thing which you ask, for you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Then Moses said, Lord, I pray that you would show me your glory. And God said, I myself will make my goodness pass before you, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you, and I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show compassion on whom I will show compassion. But, the Lord said, you cannot see my face, for no man can see my face and live. What's this passage about? It's about following God. It's about knowing God. And so as we open this this morning, we want to just understand this whole idea of the Father being with us. Since Pentecost Sunday, actually the Sunday before, right after Easter, we've been studying the Holy Spirit and the work that the Holy Spirit does in our lives. Because on Pentecost Sunday, we actually ask that question, is this the new Pentecost? Because, remember, we've been sheltered in place for 13 weeks now. And the church has had to do business and has to have meetings like this uh, remotely. But at the same time, we still do ministry. We still minister to the world around us. Our church has been blessed to bless over 80, now 85, 86 families with food and sustenance. We've been able to pray with people around the globe. We've been able to give food out, not just here on our corner, but in other places where people have come to know and receive from Christ. Because remember, Jesus asked the question, the disciples say, asked the question to Jesus, Jesus, when do we see you hungry? When do we see you homeless? When do we see you in prison? And we didn't do anything about it. He says, no, 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 you misunderstand. When you did things to the least of these, when you took care of people's needs, spiritually, emotionally, physically, psychologically, you were ministering to me. Amen. And so is this a new Pentecost? So we get to do things differently because of what is happening to us. No, the church has not stopped meeting. No, the church continues because we are the church. We are still God's hands and feet. But we remember that the Holy Spirit has come. We have received the Holy Spirit. And remember, we're walking, living, breathing sanctuaries of the Holy Spirit. That's who we are in Christ Jesus. This week's sermon, sermon uh, extra uh, helps you to understand that. It's called Eight Freedoms by Living with the Spirit. This is from a series we did several years ago, The Truth About the Holy Spirit. But it's a reminder for us, and a reminder too, that these are not things that, oh, it's, on my, it's in my computer somewhere. No, these are things we print out and we read to ourselves because they're encouragements for us to walk with the Father and know that the Father is with us, that the Father is for us. We have the freedom to experience salvation. We have the freedom to of security with God. Understand that in mind. Security with God, that the Father is there with us and for us. And all that's going on around us, the racial unrest, the protests, the violence, the COVID-19, the 122,000 deaths, God still says, uh, you have the freedom of security with me Amen. to walk with me. Amen. The freedom and to know and walk in God's truth. Because his truth is ultimate truth. Because God is always going to speak us his truth into our reality. That we understand and know his truth and not believe false lies. Not believe half-truths. Truths that sound like the truth but they're really alive. The Father leads us and gives us a spirit of discernment there. The freedom to bear fruit. The freedom to bless others. That's bearing fruit. The freedom to grow spiritually. That the Father changes our lives. We have the freedom to serve the Father, be the person that he has made us. We have the freedom to speak boldly about who we are in Christ. Why? Because the Holy Spirit has come. And so as we end this series, we look at Moses again, because Moses is asking the same kinds of questions that we do in the 21st century. Because one of the things is, as we look at our biblical heroes, we always tend to see them as complete people. Because we're looking at their lives. No, we, we know different things have happened in their lives. But as we look at their lives, we all see Moses, Moses is the great emancipator. Moses is the one who freed the people from Egypt. Yes! 
But remember, Moses was a man just like each and every one of us with clay feet and, and issues. And so what does he do? He, he gets here and says, Lord, help me to understand this. Because we need to understand what happens in the middle. We know his birth. We know he, raised, he was raised in, in the palace. We know that he spent 40 years in the desert. Now he's 80 years old. And God says, leave these people. And so God, he's got questions here. Years ago, we used to have a program with a major corporation in town here, the Kesson Program, Summer Youth Development Program. And what we would do was we'd have teenagers and high school students, college students come in. They'd have jobs for the summer. So we're teaching them all these things. But every year, we would have a professional day. And on that professional day, we bring in profession, people from all types of professions, people from McKesson. One time we had the president of McKesson come. Other times we've had professional athletes come, doctors, lawyers, you know, the, we do the gamut. Because the idea is helping young people understand that they have value and their lives can become this. But what happens is we typically look at the end of a person's life, where they are now. Because you're a successful lawyer, you're the president of the company. How did you move from being a high school student or a college student into this particular position. And so that's what we wanted them to tell. Tell the story of your becoming. And so if you look at Moses this morning, we're looking at Moses' becoming. Yes, we know he got the people out, out of Egypt and now they're at Mount, Mount Horeb. What's happening here? Because Moses is having this long conversation with God. But we get to peek into Moses. And as we peek into Moses, we see ourselves. So the story is Moses has been up on Mount Horeb. He's been up there a long time. And so he comes down, comes down from the mountain, and the people are worshiping a golden calf. Now remember, these, the Israelites, they've been in Egypt for 400 years. You know, they're, they're got, their leader's gone, and so they're, they're, they don't know this God quite yet. And so they, they go to what they know. And it's not like the world around us. They go to what they know. Because we're trying to point them to the Father. So Moses comes down. God is angry. Moses is angry. And so, previously, he says, God says, I'm not going with you. You lead the people into the land. I'm not going to go with you because they're truculent, they're recalcitrant, they're stiff-necked, they're all that long invective of words. But then, you know, he says, I'm going to go with you, but I'm staying here. And that begins our conversation here. So Moses comes down from the mountain, and he tells the people, listen, this is what God said. He is upset. Because he has brought you out, then you cross the Red Sea. Hasn't he fed you for 40 years here in the desert? Hasn't he done all these things? God's upset. The people repent. In verse 6, it says, So the Israelites stripped off their ornaments in Mount Oreb. But that's what they did. They, they were dancing and all jeweled up. They took all the stuff off because they are repenting. And then Moses goes in to talk with God in what's called the tent of meeting. And he meets God there in the cloud and he stays in the tent of meeting to talk with the Father. And verse 11 tells us, that Moses and God would speak face to face, friend to friend. Because remember, Moses is in the tent of meeting, and there's a cloud surrounding the tent of meeting. And so Moses, in verse 12, he says, God, you've been telling me to lead these people, but you have not let me know who you will send with me. Because remember, God says, I'm not coming. But you said, I know you by name, Moses, and you, Moses, have found favor with me. So what do we do with that? Because the idea here is, Moses is pleading, God, you told me what to do, but I don't know who's going with me, because I cannot do this alone. And that should be the plea in each of our lives as Christians. Lord, I cannot do this alone. I need you to speak into my heart and into my life. And so in verse 13, Moses prays for three things, and they, they, they are germane to everything of our, our lives. Here's the first one. He says, if I have found favor in your sight, because remember, verse 12, he says, you say you know me by name. You say that I found favor with you. So if I found favor in your sight. Now the key here is Moses wants assurance of his relationship with the Father because he's praying for something bigger than himself. He wants the assurance, like we all do, that we have God's favor. Yes, we do. Turn to the person to your right and to your left, wherever you are at home. If you're by yourself, point to yourself and say, I said, you have God's favor. If you're by yourself, I have God's favor. Why do you have God's favor? Because he has sent his son, Jesus Christ, 
to die that we may have favor with the Father. Everyone. Jesus wants to be saved. He wants us all to be saved. So he draws us all. He calls us all to himself. Because of the Holy Spirit, the answer is always yes. Because of Jesus, the answer is always yes. I, you have favor with me. Understand that. The Father says, you have favor with me. Then Moses pushes this a little further. If I have favor with you, give me some assurance here. Let me know, because we all want some assurance. God, are you with me today? I remember as a young person, Lord, are you with me today? In trials in my life, Lord, are you with me today? And the Father's answer is always yes. But here's the next thing in verse 13. He says that, help me to know you. Help me to know you. Now, Moses is saying, Lord, I need to know you better. Help me to understand who you are. That, Father, as we walk together, remember, they've been talking as friends, but Lord, he says, help me to know you better. That, Lord, I know your ways, that I may lead these people. A.W. Tozer helps us here. A.W. Tozer is one of my favorite authors. He says, Moses used the fact that he knew God as an argument for knowing him better. Now, therefore, Lord, I pray that you, if I found grace in your sight, show me your way that I may know you, that I may find grace in your sight. See how that works? Lord, help me to know you, that, Lord, I may understand your favor for me, that I may walk in your grace, in your strength. Understand. Take a moment. Understand the depth of that ask. Lord, help me to know you better. Now, they're meeting in the tent. They're meeting face-to-face -face as friends. But he says, Lord, I need to know you at a deeper level. I need to understand what makes your heart really beat. I need to understand what blessings mean. I need to understand your plan. I need to understand you. The Greek word is gnosos, in intimacy there. Lord, help me to have intimacy with you so that, Lord, I understand and know and walk with you. Lord, I don't want my relationship with you to be one of casual bliss. I know God. Yeah, he's fine. Yeah, I know God. Yeah, oh, yeah, we're, we're good friends. Oh, the man of spirit. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, God. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. The depth of this is, Lord, help me to understand you inside. Help me to understand you. Think of it this way. Many of you have good friends. I have several good friends. I have three who know me very, very well because we've done life together. We've walked together. We've spent time together because we have gotten to know one another. Of course, there's my friend Cornell in, in Cleveland. And then there's my friends Charlie and Jonathan. We can tell what's happening in each other's lives by the tone of our voice. We can tell when there's trouble by the way we sound, by the way we look because that is the intimacy of relationship. And that is what Moses is thinking. And that is what Moses is saying. Lord, help me to know you intimately. That, Father, I may understand you at deeper and deeper levels. Yes, many of us are happy with our relationship with Christ being right here at the surface. But the Father says, no, I want you to know me deeper and deeper because there's so much more of me for you to know. There's so much more for me in your life that I may bless and lead and guide you because I want you to understand me in the depth of my love for you. So Moses is saying the same thing here. Lord, don't leave me alone. Because, Father, I need to know you that I may walk in your way. The third part of this verse is this. It's not, Moses is saying, it's not about me. It's about helping me to know you that I may impact the people around you. Because remember, God is asking to lead. God is asking ask each one of us to lead, to guide, to direct people. Yes, just because of who we are. You may not see yourself as a leader, but you are God's person, full of his spirit, leading people to himself. And then in verse 14, God replies. He says, my presence will go with you. I will give you rest. What is he saying there? What does this mean? It means that the Father's purposes, the Father's plans will be with Moses as they are with us. That we will have the confidence of knowing and the surety of knowing that he is there because of his presence in our lives. Because Moses is praying for something bigger than himself, just as we do. 
because he's praying for the people as well. Lord, go with us. What's rest mean? Rest means, Lord, the Father's going to give us his security, his confidence in our walk, his presence every day. Remember, Jesus promises each one of us as a believer a Sabbath rest. That is where we depend upon the Father. We rest there with Him. Amen. We enjoy His presence Amen. because of the confidence that He gives us. That is why the Holy Spirit has come. Amen. Then in verses 15 and 16, Moses' questions are again, our questions as well. Then Moses says, if your presence does not go with us, don't send us from here. It's the same idea in our, our, our idea. We don't want to be abandoned because we always want to know, God, are you there? God, are you with me? God, are you going to provide for me? Jeff prayed it so well. Lord, we, we, we need the Father to let us crawl up into his lap and wrap us around in his strong arms. Why? Because from children to adults, we always want the assurance of knowing that someone with greater authority that keeps us secure, mother, father, sister, brother, grandparents, are there for us to guide and protect us. And that's what Moses is saying. God, are you there? And God is saying, yes, I will be with you. The Holy Spirit says that same thing to each and every one of us in our lives today. I am with you. That is why the Holy Spirit has come. Then secondly, in verse 16, how will anyone know that you're pleased with me and your people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish me and your people from each other as we face the people on the earth? We ask that question every day too. Lord, what, what, how are people gonna know I'm a Christian? How many people gonna know this? Oh, we make it hard. No, it's very simple. It is because of the radiance of the Holy Spirit inside of us. It is because of the way we live, the way we speak, the way we act, the way we respond, the way we give leadership. It is the Father's hand upon us that men and women may know who we are. In all the tensions around us, we speak peace, we speak love, we speak brotherhood. We speak to each other in kind words that we encourage each other's hearts. We listen to each other because just as Israel was to be a beacon to the nations around them, the way the Father blessed them and guided them, so we as Christians are to be salt and light to the people around us, to call out their isms, to help them understand and know what it is the Father is saying in the truth of his word. How do people know we're Christians? Because of the light of Christ in us, because of the actions we take, the ways in which we do ministry. Again, you're going to hate this word, just by showing up, because the Holy Spirit is in us. Amen. Then the Father says this, verse 17, and the Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing you've asked, because I am pleased with you, and I know your name. That's the second time we've got I'm pleased with you. That's the second time as I got I know your name because it is important there that we understand again and again that the Father is pleased with us. I know we all have clay feet, but because of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, the Father takes pleasure in us. Amen. He is pleased with us, and he knows us by name. Now understand, that should make you feel good. Now, I, this is a... This is a, this is a Three corny stories, but they all have to do with this idea of knowing you, okay? Because the Father knows each one of us and says, Moses, I know you. I know your heart. I know what you have been doing. I am for you. I am with you. A thousand years ago, I got to meet Tom Skinner. Tom Skinner, think of it this way, is an African-American Billy Graham. And so I'm the chairman of the Campion Crusades Youth Ministry. And so... We go to meet Tom Skinner. I've met everyone else, but I haven't met Tom yet. I'm excited to meet Tom. Tom ends up becoming a mentor of mine. Carol and I go there. I would go to meet Tom, and I put my hand. He says, oh, you're Jerry Mann, aren't you? I said, yes. He says, I know you. This is what you've done. Da, 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 da. It made me feel good. Same thing when I went to meet, I, uh, okay. I went to meet Ronnie Lott. I, we had the celebrity waiters luncheon here in town, and I go up, and I'm going to have my picture taken, and have my have me autograph the picture, all that stuff. I'm standing in line, it's my turn. I say, hey, Mr. Lott, I'm, and he goes, hey, you're Jerry Mann, aren't you? You're trying to make a difference. And he goes, da, -da, 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 -da. all this stuff, because he knew me. That's what the Father says, I know you. The difference between those men and the Father is the Father knows us intimately, and he tells that to Moses, I know you. 
I am for you. I approve of you. Turn to the person on the right or left of you and tell them the Father knows you by name and he approves of you. If you're by yourself, point to yourself, remind yourself that the Father knows you by name and approves of you. Because this is so important. Because as the Holy Spirit has come, if we don't have these things nailed down in our head, then it's hard for us to walk by the Spirit. It's hard for us to follow God. But we have to have those things nailed down that we understand what it is the Father is doing inside of us. Lord, help me to know you better. Lord, help me to realize that you know me. Help me to realize that you approve of me. That's very important for our own spiritual self-esteem as we walk by the Spirit, as we walk with confidence. And then Moses leads up to his final ask. And again, this is our question as well. In verse 18, then Moses says, Lord, show me your glory. Now, admit to yourself that there are many times in your life when you said, Lord, I want to see your glory. Lord, I need to see you today. And that is a valid question. Because we serve a God who loves us. We serve the God of the universe. Lord, help me to see you. Help me to know you. Lord, help me to see you in the world around us. Because that's valid. Lord, help me to see you. And that's what Moses says. Lord, I need to see you. Now remember, they've been meeting in the tent of meeting. There's been this cloud there. So they sit there, they speak, they talk. I wonder what that's like. You know, just sitting there, talking to a cloud, this mist in the air. Just talking, hearing the voice back and forth. And Joshua is there, too, just listening, hearing what God is saying. But Moses has not seen God. So he says, Lord, I need to see you. So what does the Father do? Just like he always does. He says, okay, I'm going to show you myself. I'm going to show you who I am. He says, I will cause my goodness to pass in front of you, and I will proclaim my name, the Lord, in your presence. I will have mercy on those who I have mercy on, and, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. But he said, you cannot see my face, for no one can see my face and live. Because Moses says, Lord, I need to see you. What is seeing God? Why is it seeing God so important right here? It's important because, again, it is the assurance of knowing that the Father is with us, that the Father is for us. It is the assurance, the confidence of knowing that He loves us. It is it. It's just great to say, Father, I see you today. I touch you today. You have touched me today. We get to do every day of our lives what Moses could not do. Moses couldn't see God. God says, in the past, let my goodness pass in front of you. That, and I'm going to proclaim my name in front of you. you know, he, and as he puts Moses in the cleft in the rock, God passes by, he turns around. That, that Moses cannot see him and be blinded by his presence. But we get to do what Moses that didn't get to do every day. Why? Because Jesus Christ, God himself, has come and walked amongst us. Jesus Christ, is, again, as John says, that person that we touched, that we felt, that we heard, that we sang with, that we worshiped with, that we ate with, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, walked amongst us. And as he walked amongst us, we got to see him and touch him and know him. Each day of our lives, because of the Holy Spirit in us, we get to see and touch and know and walk and eat with Jesus every day of our lives because... He is a living Savior, and he has done as he promised. He promised that he would ask the Father to send us a comforter, to send us the advocate, to send us the helper. The Holy Spirit has come, and the Holy Spirit resides in each and every one of us the moment we say, yes, Lord, come into my life. And that from that moment on, we get to see and know and experience God. We get to see God face to face. We get to see God's presence. We get to understand the goodness and the glory of God as he sheds himself, as he shares himself with each and every one of us. Amen. We get to do that because the Holy Spirit has come. What was our call to worship this morning? Galatians 5.25. If we live by the Spirit, which we do, 
Let us keep in step with the Spirit. Each day of our lives, the Holy Spirit is there in us, dwelling in us, to help us see the Father. Help us to know that we are approved of the Father. Help us to know that the Father is answering our prayers. Help us to know that we walk with Him. Because the Father doesn't need to put us in a cleft in a rock and let His glory pass by. Because His glory lives within each and every one of us. Because we are the children of God. And we get to see God each and every day of our lives because we see him in his glory. We see him in his presence. We see him in his physical stature as he walks amongst us and our brothers and sisters. That's the Father. So what do I do with all of this? What do we do what Moses did? We settle down. We get to talk to God as friend to friend. We get to talk to God and ask him to let us know him. Help me, Lord, to know your ways. Lord, help me to know your presence each day by walking with your spirit. Lord, help me. Show me the revelation of your power and your glory each day in my life and my family. Pray that way. Because this pastor, here's, I, I want you to pray that way. I want you to pray and walk with the Father. Lord, Help me to know you better. Teach me your ways. Lord, help me to know that your presence is with me each day. Lord, help me to walk by your spirit each day. Lord, show me. Help me to see you in your power, your glory each day. And then husbands, fathers. Lord, help me to be the spiritual leader in my home. Lord, to direct my children to you. Lord, to be the husband my wife needs, to be the wife for my wife to be, for, my, for me to be the husband my wife needs, and for me to be the husband she needs. So pray those things. Because like Moses, we get to sit before the Father, face to face, not a cloud, but his presence. Not hiding in a rock, but him here with us the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Precious Father, Lord, we bless you today. And Lord, this is Father's Day. Lord, we celebrate the fathers amongst us. But Lord, too, we celebrate you because as Father, you've told us that we can know you better. You've told us that we can walk with you. Lord, as any kid, any of us out here, Lord, many of us have longed to hear two words from our Father. One, I love you. Two, I approve of you or I'm proud of you. And Lord, you tell us that. Lord, just as you assured Moses that you approved of him, you were proud of him, just as you told Moses you loved him, Lord, I pray for my dear friends, myself too, that Father, you help us to hear that from you. Because you tell us here in this passage that you know us by name. You choose to know us. And Lord, in choosing to know us, Lord, you approve of us. Amen. So Father, join us as we pray. That Lord, we would know you more. That Lord, we would walk with you more. That Father, we would see your glory in our lives, in our families. Lord, I pray for the fathers, the husbands amongst us. That, Lord, you guide them with your spirit. Lord, to be men who keep leading their families to you. These things, Father, we pray in your holy, your mighty, and your blessed name, Jesus. Amen. Friends, I turn this back over to my friends Cheryl and Russell and Matthew to, uh, for our closing song. Please join us as we sing our last song, Hope Has a Name. 